Say hi. Thanks for rescuing me. In this week's episode, Andrew has to be rescued not only once, but twice. For his sins, he makes it into the local news cycle, and he finally makes it back to the English seas. He has been sailing for 64 days and completed 1,350 miles. It is a choice to go via the Isle of Man or go via the English coast. Part of the joy of the journey is seeing seaside towns. So I thought about going to the Isle of Man, but I kind of wanted to see Blackpool because it's England. And uh, the wind looked a bit tricky for going to the Isle of Man. Getting there wasn't a problem, but leaving could have been difficult. I just couldn't possibly do 50 miles on a beat. Uh, it'd be way too much. Uh, I might have been stuck there for a couple of weeks, getting really frustrated. Fast forward a couple of days and we rejoin him on day 68, where he plans to make a 25 mile crossing of Solway Firth. This could be my last Scottish landing spot in Ross Bay, protected from the southerly storms that are coming in in a few hours. Despite the storms of the night before, I, I'm now becalmed and I took a risk thinking there was enough wind uh, and the tides against me. So I've tied myself up to this pair of boys here to stop myself going backwards. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do. So thank you very much for the lift. It's very much appreciated. Uh, I think it's a bit later than I wanted it to be. I let go of the rope by mistake. Anyway, we're about here. So he didn't have enough wind to make it across Solway Firth, but he manages to make it across England the following day when the winds are more favourable. So overall it's taken him 54 days to circumnavigate the Scottish coastline, which includes 12 days of rest. I decided to skip sailing this afternoon. When he looks for his boat the next morning, he can't find Betty, but he follows the trail of white paint and someone has dragged his boat to the side of a driveway as they thought it had been abandoned, despite the writing on the daggerboard and the hull. HMS Betty had suffered some damage to the hull, but he was able to repair it. So we are enjoying a bit of uh, lunch on the open sea. Thank goodness the sun has come out. Uh, it's quite a breezy reach, but I'm making good progress. I'm trying to get to Barrow in Furness. Disastrous night in which I thought the boat was going and Betty is still here. It's a bit windier than I would like! I have a slight technical problem in getting to Barrow because I've run out of sea. This is not quite how I imagine sailing into Burrow. Burrow even. He gets some great support from the Barrow Sailing Club and then wave him off the next day. Barrow Sailing Club support team. Thank you so much guys. You're, You're doing amazing. Right, let's see if I can do this without cocking up. Is that right? You want video? There we go, I think we're away. So Andrew has had a rough landing and he gets some help from the RLI up the beach and we thought that would be the end of it. But all of a sudden we start seeing clickbait articles the next morning in the local papers implying that he'd been rescued far out at sea. I understand this as it makes a great clickbait article and the BBC write a surprisingly accurate summary. They quoted his Instagram saying my boat and I came in not always together and the boat landed under its own steam. Always best to focus on the truth and here's Andrew's summary of the event. So the Blackpool landing, yeah, it was a big breeze. I kept heading for Blackpool Tower because it was the most obvious landmark and I knew it was next to the RNLI because I was worried about um, getting over the breakwater uh, and I tried this new technique for landing which I'd read about undo the main sheet let the sail go straight forward beyond the mast and drift in on the waves 
no good. <laughs> you don't go anything like fast enough so these big waves come past, you know, two or three of them and then the fourth one just poof, caught the tail and over I went. Poof. But I thought I'd made it because the sail and the mast were pointing out to sea. It was like being a windsurfer again, rolling through the waves and washing to the shore. And I thought, mm, nothing's broken. Um, yeah, battens looked a bit, batten pockets a bit tired, but that was okay. And it wasn't until I got everything sorted out, I thought, oh, there's a bend in the mast. Um, and there was a shower of people who came down, the local lifeguards and the coast guards, who were telling me off for not telling Hollyhead, but I'd told Belfast and Belfast hadn't told Hollyhead, etc. And uh, the suited and booted uh, RNLI came to carry the boat up the ramp a bit later on, which was lovely. Thank you very much. And I've uh, parked it up in their shed. Very, very smart shed and nice, secure place. So the next day, um, I sailed down to Blackpool Boating Club and uh, Tony and company helped me park it up there so I could go back home and get a new mast section and I wasn't sure I'd be able to bring it up so I tested taking the broken one back down try out the tra trains never got on the tr never got it on the tram uh, but the trains were fine good advice from the um, train staff they came up to me and said oh look don't put that mast up please keep it down I thought well that'll bash people and then they said yeah look up there that's 25,000 volts in the overhead cables and I thought hmm good advice I'll take that we have generally had positive messages on the channel but this one was a little different and I really enjoyed reading it they thought that Andrew's journey is childish and attention seeking I actually agree with you Joy Electric 567 but the journey brings us a lot of joy and we hope other audience members enjoy the journey too so next week a slightly different and longer format as Andrew gets interviewed by the BBC